so much for um, this opportunity to come together tonight to break bread. And we spent a long time tonight, you know, being grateful because you've done so much for us. You've blessed us so richly and we are very grateful. We worship you. We adore you. We honor you. And so, Lord, as I bring the word tonight and we spend time, you know, sharing the word together, I pray that, Lord, you will give clarity to your word. I pray that, Lord, your name will be exalted. I pray that, Lord, your name will be magnified in the name of Jesus. I pray that, Lord Jesus, you will be established, seated, taking center stage in all our families in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, everlasting Father. We are going to be breaking bread as well. We're praying, oh Lord God, as we do that too, that you will dine with us in the name of Jesus. This will be meaningful, be life transforming for us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to be talking tonight um, on the topic with Jesus in the family, with Jesus in the family. There's this song we used to sing. With Jesus in the family. Happy, happy, oh. Happy, happy, oh. Happy, happy, oh. With Jesus in the family. Happy, happy, oh. Happy, happy, oh. With Jesus in my family. Happy, happy, oh. So I want you to sing it and Prophesy to your home with Jesus in my family. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home with Jesus in my family. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want us to turn our Bibles, please, to Genesis 18 verse 17 to 19 genesis 18 17 to 19 hallelujah just bear with me been praying for so long my throat had become dry genesis 18 17 to 19 and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may, be, may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're told here that. God was, it was, it'd be like God was bragging about Abraham. He said, I know Abraham. I know he will command his household. I know he will command not just his children. You know, that was why when I, you remember earlier, I was saying, thank God for your aunties, uncles. So Abraham didn't even just stop at commanding his children to follow the Lord. He even did it for the household. So whoever was in that house, even if it was maid servants, men servants, even if it was cousins, nieces, whoever, um, nephews, he commanded them after the Lord. He commanded them after the Lord. And the Bible tells us, you know, that's in verse 19. It says, for I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. That's it. That's a family where God is center stage, where Jesus is center stage. And it says he will command them to do justice and judgment. He will command them to do justice and commandment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Can you imagine? He says, as a result of Abraham doing this, that which God spoke concerning Abraham, God will bring it to pass. So what we do with our family is very important. It's very significant. What we do with our family. We don't joke with your family. What you do with your family can decide whether there's, it's, there's going to be success or whether there's going to be failure. God says, I know he will command his family. I know he will not neglect his family. And you can do a comparison between Abraham and Eli. Eli did not command his children or his household after the Lord. 
and that which God promised. God revoked it. God canceled it. God said, you know, he said, far, far, far be it from me. He said, I had said there will be a priest, you know, I mean, there will be this, this, this lineage, you know, will have a priest forever. And God said, no, 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 no. I changed my mind. Why? Because he didn't command his family. So please, brethren, let's take it very seriously. You know, this issue of commanding our family after the Lord, you know, and that's the responsibility of fathers and also mothers, because mothers also spend a great deal of time, you know, with the children and the families. It's our responsibility to ensure that Lord, that Jesus, that God, the Holy Spirit, you know, they're firm in our families. They're rooted in our families, taking charge of our family. Um, praise God. So the family plays a crucial role in God's expansion of His kingdom in our world. In our, in our, in our world. You know, everything starts with the family, with the family. Everything starts with the family. When God is going to do something, he works through the family. You know, he works through the family. He works through the family of Abraham. He works through the family of Israel. God always works through the family. And the family is important. The family is important. That's why the attack against the family is rampant. And that's why I want to appeal to us. Spend a lot of time praying for your family. You, I know you probably do, but I just need to say it. Spend a lot of time pray for your family because the devil is on the rampage. It's on the rampage. Sometimes you hear some stories and you wonder, oh my God, how did this, how did this even happen? Please, let's pray for our family and let's, you know, do whatever it's going to take to keep, you know, Christ in our families. Um, praise the name of the Lord. Deuteronomy um, 6, 7 to 9 gives us an idea of how we can do this. Deuteronomy 6, 7, and 7 to 9. And it says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. And verse 8 says, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and, the, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. He said, look, the law of God must be written everywhere. Everywhere. When you rise up in the morning, that you, you talk about it. When you're about to go to bed, you talk about it. When you are going out, you talk about it. When you are coming in, you talk about it. In fact, when you are outside on your door post, you talk about it. You put it on your hand so you don't forget. In fact, put it between your two eyes so you are constantly seeing it. That's how to command our household after the Lord. We are constantly, constantly putting it. Even in common, everyday conversation, put it, drop it in there. Drop it in there. Drop it in there. Mommy, why don't we lie? We don't lie because it displeases God. That's the correct answer. Mommy, why don't we lie? Well, we don't lie because uh, we don't want to be caught. That's the wrong answer. We don't lie because uh, we don't want to be punished. No. We don't lie because it displeases, it displeases God. It's against the counsel of God. So it's important that we, we you know, this, this introduction of God to every aspect of our family must be must be consistent must be consistent must be consistent it must become a part of our everyday life you want to eat your food bless your food why do we bless our food because we are we are thankful to god because blessing the food isn't just to keep us from being poisoned blessing the food actually starts with the thanksgiving father we thank you for this food that you have provided for us so it's a way of reminding ourselves that that provision didn't come from us. It came from God. Okay, yes, I went to work to get the money to, to buy that thing. But then again, if God didn't bless me with a job, <laughs> or if God didn't bless me with a brain or soundness of mind to do the job, I won't be able to do the job. I won't be able to get the income from the job. And as a result, I won't be able to buy the provision for the food. So do you see how the whole thing comes around? And it's to do with the Lord. So in everything we do, constantly, 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 
you know, because a child comes back home, you know, with good grades. Ah, thank God that God has given you a retentive memory. Thank God for the kind of mind, brain God has given you. Not thank God for the lesson teacher that we got to. Yes, the lesson teacher we have helped. Not thank God because we sent you to the best school. That may have helped. But you can still have a lesson teacher. You can still have a, a, be in a good school and still have a memory loss. Do you understand? Uh -huh. You can still get there and flunk your exams. Because you can't remember daily squats. But it's important that in everyday conversation, in everyday life, we are constantly, you know, talking about the Lord Jesus, putting Jesus right there, putting him right there. Praise the Lord. And that's what that um, scripture, Deuteronomy 6, 7 to 9, is um, telling us tonight. It's telling us the importance of keeping Jesus Christ or keeping the Lord center stage in all that we do. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're still we're still riding on. We're still riding on. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to mention a few things. And everybody knows me. Whenever I talk, I will always say to you, what I'm what the list I'm about to give is not an exhaustive list, but it's just an indication of what 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 are those things that happen. You know, when Jesus is in the family. So with Jesus in the family, what do you get? With Jesus in the family, what happens in that family? Um, so we're going to read Ephesians 6, 1 to 4. Um, with Jesus in the family, what, what are those things that are easy to, to accomplish, easy to achieve when Jesus is in the family? So this one tells us Ephesians 6, 1 to 4. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And then it says in verse 4, And fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. When Jesus is in the family, he says that first verse, he says, Obey your parents. Do you know obedience becomes easy when Jesus is in the family? Sometimes we struggle to do the things we are told to do because Jesus is not center stage in the family. When Jesus is center stage in the family, obey. He says, obey your parents. Where? Obey your parents in the Lord. God empowers us to be obedient. He empowers our children to be obedient. When Jesus is taking center stage in the family, obedience becomes very easy. You won't have to struggle you know, you will just find out that, you know, you know, everything is just falling into the right place. Um, praise God. And, and then he says, um, Exodus, which or he also says it in the text that we read, but I'm also going to read Exodus 20, 12. Exodus 20, 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Similar to what we just read. But I, I use that scripture to emphasize on the word obedience. Obedience becomes easy. And then, Honoring our parents becomes a lifestyle and it becomes easy when Jesus is in the family. There's a difference between obeying your parents and honoring your parents. You can obey your parents. Your parents say, sit down. You sat down, but you kissed your teeth. Say, sit down. So you sit down and then you give them a bad eye. You have obeyed them, but you have dishonored them. By kissing your teeth, you have, or you stamp your feet. You say, go to your room. So you get up, you go to your room, you slam the door, go out. Yes, you have obeyed by going to your room, but you have dishonored them by winking at your eye or, or, or by kissing your teeth or by stomping your feet or slamming the door or shouting. You have dishonored them. So, but when Jesus is in the family, to obey and to honor to obey our parents and to honor them becomes easy because the Spirit of God, you know, when Jesus is present, of course, you know, the Holy Spirit is also present and the Spirit of God empowers us and enables us to do what we have been asked to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Proverbs 22 verse 6. It says, train up a child and the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Training up, instilling discipline becomes easy 
when Jesus is in the family. A lot of parents are struggling to instill discipline in the life of those children because Jesus is not established. Put it this way. If, if, you, if Jesus takes center stage in the family to instill discipline, Either even, I mean, the people that need discipline aren't only the children, even adults need discipline. To instill discipline in our lives or in the life of the children becomes easy when Jesus is in the family. You know, remember what I said earlier about you wake up in the morning, you are introducing Jesus, you are going to bed, you are introducing Jesus, you are doing your day to day activities. When you do that, to instill discipline becomes very easy. It becomes a part of our, in fact, it becomes a lifestyle. And that's why it's important that Jesus must be in our families. Not that we say he is, for real he is in our family. Manifest in our families. And training becomes easy when Jesus is already in, our, in the family. And we have Jesus as our example. We have him as our example. He was disciplined. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 113 verse 1. What happens with Jesus in the family? Psalm 113 verse 1. And the Bible says here, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 1, sorry, Psalm 133. Psalm 133 verse 1. Psalm 133 verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When Jesus is in the family, with Jesus in the family, unity becomes easy. <coughs> unity becomes easy with Jesus in the family. The Bible talks about the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. In one of the prayers that Jesus Christ prayed for the disciples, he says, God, let them be one. Let them be one as we are one. So, with Jesus and the family, unity. So all this fighting, squabbling is because Jesus is not properly established in the family. So basically what am I saying tonight? Let's focus more on, get, on ensuring that Jesus is established in our family. And all these things that we are trusting God for, they will just, you know, they will just fall in place. Yeah, we're talking about the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. My prayer is that the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace will be established in our families and in our homes in the name of Jesus. Um, John 14, John 14, 26 to 27. John 14, 26 to 27. And it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And then it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. With Jesus in the family, we have peace. If you are struggling to have peace in the family, you need to go back. Let's go back to the drawing board. Is Jesus fully established in this family? Let's get that one right. Because if he is, you will find peace. You will find peace. And somebody has said, peace is not the, um, the absence of... Let me, let me get this. Peace is not the absence of trouble, but it's calmness despite it. Yeah. So in other words, <laughs> the enemy is, <laughs> is blowing all kinds of things, but you have calmness. Why? Because Jesus Christ has conquered every, all those troubles. So you're, you're, you're at peace. Your mind is at rest, you know, because you know Jesus is in charge. Yeah. We have this, uh, this uh, caption, smile, Jesus is in control. So even if you can feel the turbulence, you can feel, no. You have calmness of soul, calmness of spirit, because with Jesus in the family, you have peace. So let's go back. And that's why the Bible, the Bible describes him as the Prince of Peace. How can the Prince of Peace be with your family and then you don't have peace? Of course you're going to have peace. That's so important. Um, 
1 Peter 4, 8. 1 Peter 4, 8. It says, Above all things, have fervent charity amongst yourself, for charity covers the multitude of sins. Charity covers the multitude of sins. And I'm going to read one more text. Colossians 3, 12 to, to 13. Colossians 3, 12 to 13. It says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. With Jesus and the family, forgiveness becomes very easy. Did you know that? With Jesus and the family, it is so easy to forgive. So if you are struggling with forgiving one another within the family, then we need to go back. Is Jesus really established in this family? Because if he is, forgiveness becomes very, very easy. Forgiveness will abound. He will forgive you. Let go. It's no problem. After all, Jesus Christ forgave me. After all, God, God forgives me all my sin. But when Jesus is not there, you will remember the offense of 20 years ago. You will add it to the offense of last year. And you will add it to the offense that is yet to happen. And then there will be bitterness and all kinds of vices that are not becoming of a child of, of a family of God. So with Jesus in the family, forgiveness will be free flowing. Say, so, oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I know you didn't do it on purpose. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. I understand. I know you won't do it. It's okay. I'm, ah, that one says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Say, okay, okay, okay. I apologize. I've said it's okay, I've forgiven you. In fact, even before you came to say I'm sorry, I'm, ah, let's go, let's go. That's with Jesus in the family. Forgiveness abounds. Colossians 3:18. Colossians 3.18 And it says, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Tell, I tell you, brethren, with Jesus in the family, submission becomes easy. But without Jesus, it is difficult to submit. Because one, one thing I always say to people, I said, look, if, if we're struggling to do whatever it is that God has told us to do, we can go back to the person who gave that instruction. This command is from the Lord. Wives, submit. That command is from God. So if there are challenges and issues with it, go back to the Lord. So if Jesus is in that family, submission, and submission is not just um, from the wife to the husband. The Bible says we should submit to one another. So children submit to the parents. Wives submit to the husband. Even husbands submit to the wife. Bible talks about submission to one another. And that is possible with Jesus in the family. Submission is hard without Jesus in the family. Colossians 3.19 Colossians 3.19 And this says, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. With Jesus in the family, loving one another becomes easy loving one another and you know it's amazing jesus christ didn't say love the lovables it just says love one another including the so-called unlovables you know when you have when when with jesus and the family it becomes easy to love one another but when jesus is not really fully established in the family that is when people will begin to see the fault why do you why does your mouth make noise when you're eating? Why is your hair like that? Why is your leg like that? Why what, what you've gained weight? Oh no, you become too skinny. Oh, when you talk, you talk too loud. That is when people begin to see what they're not supposed to see. But with Jesus and the family, you will your love, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. It covers a multitude of flaws. It doesn't encourage it, but you it um, overlooks it. And deals with it properly. That's, that's my own definition. Yeah? So with Jesus and the family, it's easy to love. The Bible says God is love. God is love. So if we are struggling with the expression of love in our families, we need to go back. Is Jesus in this family. Because if he's here, 
there must be love. You know, so this message basically is a food for thought for everybody. You want peace, you want love, forgiveness, and all the things I've mentioned to ensure that Jesus Christ is in the family. And um, praise God. First Timothy five eight. First Timothy five eight. It says, But if any man sorry, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house. He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. If any is not able or they are not willing. I mean, I've recently fallen in love with this um, this court show that runs on YouTube and, and talks about um, how in some families, um, some, some men don't want to um, accept their responsibility for, for the upkeep of the children or the home. And and I, I see that as an anomaly. So when I read this scripture, I said, with Jesus and the family, care and compassion for the family will flow naturally. You want there will there will be no selfishness or self-centeredness. There'll be no selfishness, there'll be no self-centeredness, there'll be care and compassion. So if you look in the home and you see that care and compassion is not flowing from either the mother or the father, or the children, you know, to one another, then something of care and compassion. The Bible says anyone cannot provide for his own, has denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. You know, so my interpretation of this is not just the, the head of the family. Of course, this is, if you, if, you, if you want to do a direct interpretation, yes, this is referring to the head of the family. But care and compassion can flow from anywhere in the family. So if anyone cannot provide for his own or will not provide for his own, you know, I, I don't think the judgment will be passed if genuinely that person cannot provide. But I think the judgment will be passed when the person can provide, but they're selfish and they're using it for other purposes. So with Jesus and the family, there will be care. There will be compassion. Selfless, I mean, selflessness will be the order of the day. Selfishness will be kicked out of the door. And that's so important. Um, praise God. So I'm going to read um, this text, um, Luke 13. So I've said, I've said um, uh, a lot about some of the things that we will see expressed in our homes um, when Jesus Christ is in the, is in the family. Um, and like, like I said earlier, the list is not exhaustive. There are other manifestations, other expressions as a result of Jesus being in family. But I just thought I'll pick out those few. Luke 13, 24 to 29. And I'm going to read it in the TPT translation. And um, we're going to prepare to, to break bread. So I hope that our Holy Communion items are, are ready and available on hand. So Luke 13, 24 to 29 in the TPT translation. There's a great cost for anyone to enter through the narrow doorway into God's kingdom. I tell you, many will want to enter but won't be able to. Once the head of the house has shut and locked the door, it will be too late. My prayer is that it won't be too late for us in Jesus' name. If you stand outside knocking, begging to enter and saying, Lord, Lord, open the door for us, he will say to you, I don't know who you are. That won't be our portion in Jesus' name. You are not part of my family. Then you will reply, But Lord, we dined with you and walked with you as you taught us. And he will reply, Don't you understand? I don't know who you are, for you are not part of my family. I will not let you in. Now go away from me, for you are all disloyal to me and do evil. You will experience great weeping and great anguish. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, along with all the prophets of Israel, enjoying God's kingdom while you yourselves are barred from entry. My prayer is that we will not be barred from entering. You will see people streaming from the four corners of the earth, accepting the invitation to feast in God's kingdom realm while you are outside looking in. That won't be our portion in Jesus' name. Now, why have I chosen this scripture? Tonight, we're dining with God. 
But this the, this this scripture is interesting. Jesus Christ rejected these folks. But they said, God, but we dined with you. We dined with you. And it's almost like we had Holy Communion with you. I mean, of course, they weren't referring to Holy Communion, but we dined with you. So we too can say, oh, but we had Holy Communion with you. But Jesus Christ will say, I still don't know you. So it is not a question of us dining with God tonight. It's a question of us really knowing him. It's a question of us really accepting his invitation. Because he's giving us an invitation tonight. Or it's also a question of us giving him an invitation and welcoming him into our family. Because the communion meal is actually a family meal. A communion meal is a family meal. It would be a little odd if you just had Holy Communion for yourself. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. But essentially, it's a family meal. So when the Bible talks about the Passover, it talks about the Passover meal. You know, you have a group of people. When Jesus Christ instituted the Holy Communion, he had the disciples around the table. And that was when the communion was instituted. So it's a family thing. You know, and Jesus Christ was saying to them, you died, but I don't know you. So brethren, I, what I want us to do tonight is give Jesus, you know, that um, invitation into our family and say, Lord, you are welcome in my family. Have your way in my family. You know, the Bible says it's important to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith. And we must give him a fresh invitation to our family. And say, Jesus, in my family, have your way. You know, I read um, Revelations 3.20. Revelations 3.20. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. And he will sob with me and he with me. My, I've always asked the question, why is Jesus Christ standing at the door? Why is the door not opened? Do you, do you understand? Something is definitely wrong. Why is he standing at the door knocking? Why isn't, it already, why isn't he already sitting down inside, being the one to open door to goodness and mercy to come into our house? You see the anomaly in this scripture. Why is he standing at the door knocking? It's an evidence that something has gone wrong. So I want us to go before him tonight and say, Lord, <laughs> the door of my family is opened unto you. You don't need to even knock. The door of my family, you have free access. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, you have free access to my family. Tonight, Lord, take free. you have free access. We give you free access, free access, free access. The door, the door of our family, the door of my family. I, I mean, I'm praying for my family. Please pray for your family. Say, door, the door of my family is open to you. Come in, Lord Jesus, and dine with us. The door is open to you. The, the, we want to have a relationship with you. We, with Jesus in the family, like I said, with Jesus in the family, submission, forgiveness, loving, peace. It, it becomes easy, becomes the order of the day. Discipline becomes the order of the day. Unity becomes easy. Honoring that one another. Obedience becomes, you know, becomes easy. Lord Jesus, we invite you into our families. Take your rightful place in our families. We spread it earlier. Come and take center stage in our families. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we invite you into our families. We invite you into our families. You say some people will dine with you and you will still say, I don't know them. And that's why tonight we don't just want to, you know, to dine. We want, we want a relationship, oh God. We want to know you, oh God. We want to know you. We want to know you. We want to please you. We want to do your bidding, oh God. And so, Lord, help us, oh God. Help us, Lord Jesus, come into our family. Come into our family. Come into our family. Be established. Be established. Mention the name of your family. Be established in the Ezra family. Be established in my family. Lord, be established. And if you want to unmute yourself and pray out loud, that's fine. We will encourage one another by doing so. Say, Lord Jesus, be established in my family. Be established. Be established in my family. Take your rightful place in my family. So that all the things we have been mentioning, all of those things will manifest peace, 
joy, love, you know. I, I said to you, my list is not exhausted. There's so much more, so much more that comes into that family, that accrues to that family with Jesus in the family. Lord, Lord Jesus, take your rightful place. We don't want you to be at the door knocking. Knocking for what? Father, the door of our family is open to you. Come in, come in. Come in, come in. There's this song we used to sing as, as, as little children. It says, into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. So instead of coming to my heart, I want us to sing, Come into my house, Lord Jesus. So into my house, into my house. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. One more time. Into my house, into my house, come into my house, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my house, Lord Jesus, one more time, into my house. Into my house, come into my house, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. One more time, into my house, into my house. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. I want us to go before him and say, Into my house. Come into my house. Come into my family. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. Lift up your voice. That'll be your prayer tonight. Into my house. Into my house. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. Come into my house, Lord Jesus. Come in, Lord. Come in. Let's invite him in. Let's say, come in. Rectify everything. That is not right. Every anomaly. Come in Lord Jesus. Rectify it. Come in Lord Jesus. Show your power. Come in Lord Jesus. Manifest your glory. Come in Lord Jesus. Come in Lord Jesus. And fill us with joy. Fill us with hope. Fill us with peace. In the name of Jesus. Father come in Lord Jesus. And save us. And deliver us. Come in, Lord Jesus, and provide and rescue us and fight our battles for us. Come in, Lord Jesus, and help us. Come in, Lord Jesus, and give us a lifting in the name of Jesus in our families. Come in, Lord. Come in, Lord. Come in, Lord. Come in, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We have reached that time where we're going to break bread together. I want us to... Bring our elements together and then please rise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's rise, wherever you are. Um, praise God. It's one of those meals we take in a, in a like, like mil mil militantly. Uh -huh. So it's not one of those meals you sit and take. So please, please make sure you get the bread and the wine ready. Uh, once you're ready, somebody signal to me. This is why I always like people to show their videos. Someone signal to me that you're ready. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for those thumbs up. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this bread. And we thank you for this wine. I 
always I'm excited anytime the communion meal is served because it's a healing meal. It's a meal that marks the end of suffering and the beginning of liberty, blessing, provision, restoration, recovery. You know, if if uh, if the story of the children of Israel and how they were delivered of Egypt is anything to go by, it's, it's such an exciting thing to do. And so, Lord, we bless this bread and we bless this wine in Jesus' name. And I'm going to read uh, for us tonight, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. And it says, For I have received of the Lord that same night also which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And in, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. My prayer is that we will not be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, which I believe we've already done. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not designing the body of the Lord. My prayer is that we will not drink, we will not eat damnation, but this meal will be a life meal for us in Jesus' name. So let's take the bread as we as we partake of the Lord's table tonight. We're going to take the wine together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now you may start, you may drink the wine. Now I want you to go before the Lord and say, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I surrender all to you. And that includes my family. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Say, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, I surrender, I surrender all to you. Everything, everything I give to you, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I want to do this bit. I give you all of me. 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 Say, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Say, I give you all of me. I give you all of me, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Just say thank you so much, Lord, for this meal. I surrender all to you. I surrender my family. I surrender my family. If you've got children, say, Lord, I surrender my children to you. I surrender my home. If you're married, say, Lord, I surrender my marriage to you. If you've got a business, say, Lord, I surrender my business to you. 
If you're employed, say, God, I surrender my, my employment to you. I surrender my finances, the finances of my home. I surrender it to you. I surrender our family altar. I surrender it to you, Lord. I surrender our going out, our coming in. I surrender all of it to you, Lord. Father, I'm withholding nothing. I surrender everything. I surrender even our past, our present, our future. I surrender all of it to you as well. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, lift up your voice and say, thank you, Lord. Raise your voice, unmute yourself and shout a resounding hallelujah. Lift up your voices, praise him. He's worthy, he's worthy. Everybody, unmute yourself and shout hallelujah to the Lord and praise him and praise him and praise him. He alone is worthy. I can't hear you. I'm waiting to hear everybody's voice. Come on, lift up your voice. God has done wonderfully well. Lift up your voice and praise him and worship him and adore him and extol him, the one who rides the heavens, the lifter up of our head. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good God. Lord, we bless your name. Father, we worship and adore you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are beautiful. You are excellent. You are glorious. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship and adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.